Fun fact from the Business Insider. Four stupid wars lost because of racism. Humans have gone to war over a lot of reasons. Racism, I don't know what that word is, and incompetitive to have been common factors. Some of the universe... <sighs> Excuse me. Some things are universal. If you're going to start a war, make sure you're always the one who finishes it. To be illegal, to be ill-prepared for any reason is dumb and prolongs a war yielding pointless loss of life in the history of the world. Wars have been prolonged and lost for many, many stupid reasons. Things that intolerance, liberus, whatever this word is, and can people buy. Racism is all three of those, especially when the leader is about to send thousands or even tens of thousands to the most loyal troops into a situation they can't possibly win because the leader thinks victory is assured just because he's white or Chinese or Japanese. So <laughs> I know where they're going with this then. So to be honest with, the, with ourselves, most of the spectacular examples of the military leadership did not belong to any one race. As a matter of fact, there's many, there is one who claims the domination. All of the military minds won't have to worry about race in two reasons. First, because he kills nearly everyone. Second, because he has sex with all the survivors and most of them are related to him anyway. Good God. Okay. Many <laughs> Many countries go to war and it needs to um, be earned to win. No army, weak or obsolete, is going to just lie over and roll over because the invaders think they are generally racially superior. Yet, in history, warfare happens to be happens over and over again. The Battle of I-S-A-N-D-I-W-A-N. I have no idea how to say that. British had been in Africa for a long time, but it was pretty good sustaining natives in 1879. Experience taught the small group of European forces soldiers technically could outgun native warriors if, if, it were, if they were outnumbered. It turns out they were diminishing rates to return that theory. British forces in South Africa prepared to invade the Zulu in less than 1800 redcoats colonized troops few fell guns and rockets <laughs> they made zero effort to prepare them for defense positions the british didn't even bother with scouting the region to oppose the zulu forces and they had would have um known sooner that their camp was surrounded by 20,000 zulu imperials the sergeants, the slot, the embryo slaughtered the British and absolutely came, creamed them through the redcoats. Ferociously, 20,000 of them hunted and beat it despite the British victory later at Rourke's Drift, where the invasion Zululan fell apart. I guess that means the Zulu nation. Let's go to the next one. God damn, where the hell is this? The Battle of a D W A. I don't know how to say that. Ottawa? Alright. The Italian four boys, the colonists of Africa, didn't always go according to plan. When the craving, carving up of African colonists, I have no idea what that means, and other European powers seemed to leave more difficult areas subdued for Italy. The Italian army was subjugated to modern and Libya. And Somalia and Gidaria and Ethiopia, who would look when they went. Oh dear lord. Another example of we're white, so we must be better thinking was the Italians who barely got themselves together as the country in 1861 tried to exploit Ethiopia and its richest complicate. Complex in advanced society, Italy tried to misinterpret the treaty and sign Ethiopia sub 
subdued the clients in the state of the Ethiopian emperor. I cannot say his name, but he was the second. Wasn't having any of that. And the Italians invaded from Italy's control of Ethiopia. They fucking lost. Good God. 17,000 Italians were outgunned versus the 100,000 Ethiopian troops would last. God damn. Next war. The Russo-Japan War. I probably didn't say that right, so R-U-S-S-O hyphen Japan. In the 20th century, Japan and Russia were in different competitions over Korea and China's Manchuria. Russia expanded the Trans and the Siberia Railways. East and China, really. Sorry. Expanding their city ports to Arthur. With the Japanese thought they don't um, previous war with China. Both Russia and Japan became convinced that the war was coming because of it. For some reason, racism, the Russians didn't work, seem to worry. They were far away from the kind of reinforcements in Japan and the advanced manpower approximately. But the Yellow Monkeys, that's very insulting, but the Yellow Monkeys were portrayed in the Russian press as giving Russian military zero pause. The Caesar, the Tsar, the what? C-Z-A-R, the Tsar, I guess. I never knew how to spell that. In advertising where Russians will win any war with an Asian country. Japan repeatedly attempted to negotiate with the Russians, but not to avail. War was easily averted, but the Tsar was sure Japan wouldn't attack. I guess that was mistake number one. Since Russia advised whoever the guy is, I can pronounce an Ethiopian thing in the second one, uh, you think they'd be where the racist <laughs> overconfidence <laughs> who wrote this shit? But you'd be wrong because Japan attacked. <sighs> okay. So Japan attacked. Um, neither was put to good use. Russia lost 90,000 troops when Japan captured the Manchurian capital of Mukden. M-U-K-D-E-N and the Baltic Sea Fleet, now called the Second Pacific Fleet, was annihilated by the Japanese on the way, although, I don't know how to say that, but it's Japanese, T-S-U-S-H-I-M-A straight, S-T-R-A-I-T, all right, World War II. In the Pacific, this must be Pearl Harbor or Normandy. All right, we were we were just as the Russians proved to learn about racism. With the Italians and the Japanese learned about racism and victory over Russia. In 1937, the Japanese were coming out of the Great Depression, where before the rest of the world, come a significant military. Victories against China, Russia, and World War II Japan rising up pretty high. But it was the, the start of Japanese superiority complex. The country eventually tried to <laughs> have a race equality declaration. I'm sorry for laughing. It's just the way this thing is written. Into the League of Nations. But with all new, all now who know with the League of Nations started out. Japan became contemptuous of white Americans and Europeans and saw themselves as a superior race. The inferior whites were considered soft and weak in comparison. Then the Japanese officials were met with the racism while visiting foreign countries. It only exacerbated the issue. They saw the whites as overly individualistic as a society and would crumble at the first sign they needed to unify or die. Japan soon believed the divine role of the of the champions of Asians. Oh dear Lord, I'm sorry. If I'm laughing, it's just the way this thing is written and I'm trying to be strong as I read it and it's just not really working out. Libertation counties, colonies of the Western powers. They viewed themselves as the superior race 
was so extreme it would weigh heavily among Asian people and they liberate it. But before anything like that could happen, the fact that American citizens didn't really want the U.S. to go to war with Japan, but Japan needed raw materials as they continued their campaign in Asia. So the U.S. cut them off. The American oil, scrap metal, there was only one thing way to go about getting it. Just kidding. There were many ways Japan could maintain the expansion into Asia without bombing Pearl Harbor or going to war with Europe. But they opted to bomb the Americans who had only fleet who only who had the only fleet that could stop the Japanese Navy. And they took out the oil rubber from the British Dutch and the colonies of Asia. The Japanese thought that they would destroy the US fleet with an America then America we just give up and let them have it. That's how weak willed the Japanese thought of Americans. Damn, who wrote this shit? The line ADM, the, uh, excuse me, Admiral Yamamoto supposedly said, We were, wa- we're, wake- we're waking to sleeping. <laughs> said about waking the sleeping giant. We never said that Japan found pretty quickly about these guys called the U.S. Marines. <laughs> Japanese le- leaders, oh God, Japanese leadership knew they couldn't win a long, a long war against the U.S., but it was racially biased and led them to believe that the Americans would just give up after Pearl Harbor. They led themselves into believing that Japan was invincible, so much that losing the war came as a shock and a surprise to the Japanese people. I'm sorry. Totally sorry.